lunch is served. <laughs> I thought I told you I don't want this phony crowd at least to call my house. Really, Joe, I wish you'd be a little nicer to Natasha. Marilyn, you don't need these Hollywood sharks and backslappers anymore. Oh, oh, for Christ's sake, will you put some clothes on? Is that what you said last night, Giuseppe? Marilyn, you cannot walk around like this in public. My sister's here! Like that. You know, there's always a little voice in back that says, well... I wonder if I could have gone on and made a go of it, and well, good if you. I can't, well, I'll be glad to go back to my dishes and my... Good morning, Natasha. I will come right to the point. I have read the script, and I recommend you take it. The character is known only as the girl. She does not even have a name. But it's a clever story. <laughs> Billy Wilder is the director. It shoots primarily in Los Angeles, with one week in New York. I don't care if it shoots in Siberia as long as it gets me out of San Francisco. All right, uh, Marilyn, come all set. Now, darling, Marilyn, when you get to the what you call uh, great day, yeah? you watch it in your heel, all right? And roll some. Roll it. Mark it. And exit. panties are really sheer. Even up on the crane, I could still see the dark pubes. Jesus. Marjorie. Marjorie, please. Uh, could we put another pair of panties over those panties? Thank you. In the space of a single day, I believe we have increased Marilyn's wardrobe of underthings by 200%. <laughs> Joe, Joe. Hey, what do you think about Marilyn showing up more? I had no idea they didn't renew your contract. What a lousy break. Yeah. I've been thinking about getting back to the city for a while now. I'm gonna try my hand at Broadway, where they appreciate real talent. Hey, am I disturbing you, Marilyn? Do you realize that you haven't taken your eyes off your goddamn reflection since I've been here? Well, gee, Eddie, I hate to break it to you, but what do you think actresses do in their dressing rooms? I don't know. Guess it depends how self-absorbed they are. He's back? The lifeguard? Don't let him insult you like that. Get out of here. Sure. I was just leaving. No, no, not you, Eddie. That was just a line that I was working on. Could you please sit down? I'm sorry. Please. Well, you delivered it well. Like he would know? You know, sometimes I have to look in the mirror to see who's there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh, 
Much better. So you uh, make some booze with your downers now? It's not booze, Eddie. It's champagne. It's still booze, and the combination can kill you. What, you're going to lecture me now? Am I, am I the only person that tells you this stuff? What about your husband, huh? But what about your, your, your friends? I mean, for Christ's sake, don't you have any friends? Well, of course I have friends, Eddie. Ha! Huh. But see, these here are my best friends. They're the only ones who are completely loyal, the only ones who never try to change me. They shake me, see, and sometimes they get very nasty and they yell, Hey, bitch, get the fuck out of bed! Oh, yes. Sometimes, when I feel my clock running down and I'm dead on my feet and I can't dance another step, they run all over my body and turn all my switches back on. They make me alive again. The way they lined up to see me in New York. Don't let it go to your head. Same folks line up to see the fat lady in a two-headed calf. They love a good freak show. You seem to enjoy it. You think I'm fat? You're a little porky around the middle, if you want to know. I didn't ask. You know, Zanuck says he thinks the seven-year itch is going to make him a bundle. He says it's my best role ever. Well, you've had enough practice. It's the same role you always play, cheap, dim-witted floozy. He says I'm really incredibly good in the picture. Then why is he sending us this crap? Have you looked at these masterpieces? The girl in the red velvet swing. You play a rich old man's mistress. The Revolt of Mamie Stover. You play a hooker in Honolulu. Oh, and here's an art movie. How to be very, very popular. Starring Marilyn Monroe's curly flag. You should be working with Burton, with Brando, with Olivier. But what if I'm, you know, not that good of an actress? I mean, what if I just don't have that kind of talent? Then you'll just have to develop that kind of talent. You'll just have to march into Zanuck's office and remind him that he would lose about a million dollars a year without you. You'll just have to tell him you want to do serious roles in serious films with serious directors you select. And then what? Then will you be happy? Will that be good enough for you? Will anything ever be good enough for you? No, dear. Movie stars don't choose their own pictures. I choose their pictures. That's how they get to be movie stars. You understand me? You are a movie star because I made you a movie star. You could send me your sister from Philly or your Aunt Josephine from Minneapolis. If I wanted to, I could do the same thing for them. No. If I'm a star, it's the public that has made me a star. No studio, no director, the public. Is that so? Well, all the public wants to see you do is sing and dance and wiggle your ass. Who do you think you are, Catherine Hepburn? <laughs> You want to play Shakespeare? You want to play the brothers Karamazov? Not the brothers. Grushenka. Huh? She's a girl, Mr. Zenik. All right. Let's defer this discussion. We'll talk about it after the seven-year itch is released. Well, now I think you need my help to promote that movie. So that gives me more... What was that word that Johnny used to use? I know. Leverage. We're here today with Marilyn Monroe, the first woman in the history of show business to successfully negotiate her own independent production deal. I'm Sidney Skolsky, and I love Hollywood. Marilyn, I understand that under the terms of your new deal, you'll be developing screen properties to produce yourself out of your office in New York. Now, uh, why New York, Marilyn? Well, Sydney, I believe it's a better atmosphere for me to find good material and for me to learn to use myself more fully as an actress. I will relocate with you. I'm sorry, Natasha. I can't afford you anymore. I wish I could. You have no choice. You need me. You need me like a dead man needs a coffin. Oh, you're so dramatic. I'll just have to find another good coach in New York, that's all. You will never find anyone who loves you like I do. You cannot even recognize and see your love when it is offered to you, you ungrateful brat! I took you in when you were nothing. I breathed life into you. I made you into a star. 
Yeah, you and apparently everybody 